Hi, Chris here from the Engraver Studio, and today I'm going to present to you my new tool, which is a digitally controlled pneumatic engraving tool used to do power assisted engraving. What's unique about the NSET, as we call it, which stands for engraving and stone setting, is that it's run by a microchip, so essentially it has a small computer on board. And what this system does is, through an electrical current of low voltage, we're able to tell a valve that's inside when to open and close, at what rates, and how long to stay open and closed, to pulse the air to our handpiece. The system was designed to go at very slow speeds, starting at zero, and going up to a preset speed uh, or pulses per minute. Uh, you won't have to worry about setting anything because it essentially works more like driving a car. As you push the pedal, it goes faster. Uh, I can explain more of that shortly. Some of the advantages that we're finding with the slower speeds has to do with the cutting action of the tool and again those are things that we'll cover later on. So the system basically comes as you see here this is the NSET controller it comes with a precision regulator and this is actually a quick change of course you have your power supply that's plugged in and a foot pedal. The foot pedal is a very nice pedal it's it's larger than what sometimes is considered normal and we did a lot of testing on on which pedal to use and what's nice about this is very generous your whole foot fits there it's very ergonomic and you can work all day without any real fatigue um, very easy to to push it back and forth it's got a nice wide footprint and you can see the non skid surface on the top as well as on the bottom to keep it in place I'm going to show you how this whole handpiece system works here. What I've come up with though is what I consider to be a very ergonomic design in that as you hold it you can see that it fits in different size hands very easily and it has a lot of contour to it so that when you hold it it feels very comfortable in your hand without having to give it too much grip you know which also adds a lot of fatigue. Uh, I've decided to go with a wooden handle, kind of like a traditional engraving uh, tool, which is just nice. It's, it's a nice, comfortable feeling. It comes with a um, collet system, or I should say it comes with individual collets that you can turn into a system, in that these are all stainless steel collets, and the collets themselves have a ball detent, which is what holds the collet in place. And then this stop ring, which is an O-ring, comes in actually 10 different colors. So now you, it'll be easy for you to color coordinate your uh, tools of, of different shapes and what have you, or for different jobs. Some people like to organize them according to uh, the kind of work they do with them say for stone setting they might have one color or they do it simply by the different shapes flats onglets uh, and and different style of tools this hand piece is actually very versatile in that it's going to be like having at least three different hand pieces because the system has been designed so that you can change the striker head which is inside here and I'm going to show you that here now. Okay so when you want to adjust the system you have three different ways that it can be done. The first one of course is to set your pressure uh, higher or lower. Uh, the end set works in a pressure range from somewhere between 40 up to 90 and even 100 psi. Uh, it's a very low volume but a high pressure system. It only uses air when you're using it. There's never any bleed air or anything at any other time. So it uses air very efficiently. 
you can see that we're using a very small 1 8 inch hose here. Now what happens is this part of the handpiece unscrews and inside then you have your striker head which can be changed and the weight of that along with your pressure will give you a different power range and you can change that uh, several different ways. This part of the handpiece I call the, the engine and inside the piston is actually inside of the the handle here okay this external striker head is what can be changed by simply coming in loosening a set screw and you can see it doesn't have to be very tight sliding it off of the shaft and then install whichever weight depending on the job that you're going to do back on now let's take a look at how this thing runs. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and press the pedal here. And you can see that you can make it just hit one time. Or as you press the pedal slowly, you see it's speeding up. And if you watch carefully, you're going to notice that as this happens, the stroke length begins to shorten, but on the back end and not on the front. So as you go faster, it automatically shortens the stroke length. I'm coming off of the pedal very slowly just to show you how well you can adjust it. And so there are times where you can go as slow as one pulse per second with plenty of striking force to cut the metal and hammer as well. Um, those slow speeds really are great when you're hammering. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put back on a heavier weight striker head. This one is the one that I use most of the time. Screw the front end back on. Doesn't take too long to change. Now, what's unique also about this system is that what's going to happen is the striker head is actually going to hit the back of the graver itself, okay, or the collet. By loosening this set screw, this whole front end comes out, and the collar itself is what's holding the graver in place. Also, the collar has a micro adjustment here so that as you turn it in and out, you can change where that striker head hits the back of the graver itself. So it produces a different kind of a blow. Sometimes it's kind of a hit and a push at the same time. And actually moving that whole thing forward so you're not striking an anvil or something before that you're actually striking it so it's much like a, a hammer and chisel so let's put that back in now the one thing is when you put that in it takes hardly any pressure to hold that because there isn't really any force on the collar itself that's just to hold everything now as I start to press the pedal depending on where that's positioned, you can kind of hear, as I push back, you can hear it striking it. So it's just barely striking there. Now, if I loosen this and turn the collar counterclockwise, and it doesn't take a lot, so it comes back in, I'm just going to hold on to that. You can actually see that it's act moving that pull graver forward and back. Now the detent ball is holding it in place from flying out of there. Now that's going to give you more power than if it's just barely striking the back. And what happens is when you have it in the metal you get this cutting action that actually again is like a hammer and chisel in that it keeps the 
driving it forward through the metal and makes it makes the work quite easy so basically the, you you have those three adjustments you have your pressure and again as you turn that pressure up so for example I now have my pressure up at about uh, 90 psi and as I turn the pressure down let me turn the pressure down here a little bit now I'm at <clears throat> about 70 psi and I think you can hear the difference in how it's striking and again you can turn it down even more so depending on what you're doing if you're doing real fine work shading and those kinds of things uh, you may want less pressure there we go now that's down to a 50 psi and you can hear I mean it's still striking but not as hard as it was at the higher pressure so you have a lot of adjustability now it in the beginning it takes a little time to get used to but for the most part you'll find those places that you like the other thing you'll be able to do is you'll be able to make a mark on your collar and some index marks here on your graver uh, so that you can know exactly where to go for different things as you decide what works best for you. You can really individualize the system as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little cutting here just so you can get an idea of um, how, how it performs. Okay, uh, I haven't changed the setting and I'm gonna go ahead and step on the pedal and I don't know if you can see that moving back and forth but you can see that stroking action that's happening because of the striker head actually hitting the back of the graver. Now that again can be adjusted to be more or even less and, and it gives you a little bit different cutting action depending on what you do. So let's make a cut here. Um, this is a flat graver. and. So you can go slower, speed it up if you want. But now speeding up doesn't mean that you're going actually faster with your cut. In other words, if you're going slow, your stroke, as, you, as I showed you earlier, your stroke, the pulses let the stroke lo be longer. And so a lot of times what seems like, because it sounds like you're going slower, you're really not going that much slower. And of course it all depends too on whether you're taking a wider cut or a narrower, narrower cut. I'm going to change the graver tip and just put in a, I think it's 105. Um, as you're cutting, you can of course go faster and then slow down. And when you come to the end or get really close to the end of a cut, you can stop. And if you need that little bit more, you can just take that extra little cut that you need. And especially when you're doing something like coming in and intersecting lines so that you don't run over, which is very nice. Uh, if you have to follow something along its edge, you know, very precisely, you can go slow, you can start out, and again, it's like driving a car, so whenever you're, um, if, you're in, if you're in a long curve or something where you can you know, go a little faster as far as the speed go ahead, but now when you come to that really tight curve, slow down. And people find that, especially beginners, find that very useful. Uh, it's interesting to watch the cutting speeds of someone just starting that go really slow um, so in other words they're not trying to keep up with the tool I, I use this analogy in saying that if I were to give you a car and told you to drive it through an obstacle course and I said this car can go 10 miles an hour or will only go 10 miles an hour and you can only stop and start as you're controlling of course steer or if I gave you a car and I said you can stop and start, go as fast as you want, go as slow as you want, and steer, which do you think you'd do better with? So um, it only makes sense to work this way. And until now, starting from zero was something that uh, hasn't been done. And there's, there again, there's a lot of advantages to these slow speeds, uh, which you know I'll be doing more presentations as time goes on. 
um, especially with the hammering in that. So that's just a short brief uh, to give you a brief idea of, of how this thing cuts in that. Um, but what I want to do now is just show you a little bit about the ergonomics of the hand piece. Now, the one nice thing when you come when it comes to hammering is that as you hold this, it fits nicely in your hand. You have this area here where your fingers fit in nicely, and of course, this part of the handle rests well on the crotch of your finger, which is very nice. Now. Um, the other thing that I think this tool will become very useful for will be for like doing scrimshaw. And so again, I'm going to turn the pressure down. And the pulse is being crisp and almost very predictable um, is a big advantage for that kind of work in that you'll be able to take your rows of dots and line them up perfectly and you can also you'll be able to come in and go really slow you could even come in and just do it this way by just touching every say every other stroke or if you need to you can come in and make one Okay, now that's set again now at a really low pressure around actually under 50. If I do the same thing at a much higher pressure around 80 or so, you're going to see quite a difference in the power and how those dots would be and that could be end up being too much, but you can still do that single punch which is kind of nice. Uh, using it a lot sometimes for stone setting uh, especially when you're using your beading tool to, to start to push the metal over or raising beads and that kind of a thing. Or you can also just you know control it by going very slow. You can see it ha it'll have a lot of power if you want it to. And it continues to just drive itself in just like a hammer. Okay, so that uh, is a pretty good overview of the tool and the system. Watch for the announcement of when they'll be available, which should be sometime in, in the spring. Uh, we should have the first units ready to go. I hope that uh, you give it a try.